Part two, so around 12.30 a.m., Philip was spotted walking along a highway. He was pulled over and cops found Colleen's ID on him, found her credit cards, and then also a blood-stained box cutter in his backpack. And when asked whose blood it was, he responded, the girl. He was arrested and ultimately kind of drew out a map of where they could find her body. They did find Colleen's body. Uh, she had been sexually assaulted and a tree branch was still um, inside her and she had no clothing on from the waist down. So Phillips lawyers tried to plead insanity saying that he just had a kind of a break in reality. However, he brought a change of clothes. He brought the box cutter, he brought the gloves and he brought a ski mask, which showed them that all of this was premeditated. In 2014, while he was awaiting trial for Colleen's murder, he was at a juvenile uh, center when he was able to get past some distracted staff and he followed a female staff member into the bathroom and attacked her. He began strangling her and when she was screaming, he would start to punch her and thankfully other staff did hear her and came in to stop the attack. He was then found guilty on first degree murder as well as rape and robbery for stealing her undergarments as well as her ID and credit cards. However, in the state of Massachusetts, a juvenile cannot be sentenced to life in prison. So he was given life with the possibility of parole after 25 years.